Let's take a look at the intermolecular forces for SO3. This is sulfur trioxide. So the first question we ask, we'll use this flow chart here to figure out the intermolecular forces, is do we have ions present? So there's no negative or positive after SO3 here, so we do not have ions present. So we go to the next piece here. And that asks, do we have a polar molecule? Is there a positive and negative side of the molecule that would cause it to attract other molecules? If we look at SO3, if we look at the molecular geometry, we can see that SO3, it's trigonal planar. So it's in a plane here. And each one of these oxygen atoms, they're pointing in opposite directions. So because of that, it's symmetrical. We don't have a dipole. So this is a nonpolar molecule. Let's go back to our flow chart for intermolecular forces. So polar molecules, they're not present. So we come down here, and the only forces that we'll have for SO3 are London dispersion forces. London dispersion forces, they're these temporary dipoles. We have them with nonpolar molecules, and what happens is they cause a molecule next to them to set up a little bit of a dipole, a positive, negative, and then these molecules can attract, at least temporarily. It's fairly weak, as evidenced by the fact that SO3, it's usually a gas. If you need help figuring out the polarity of SO3 or drawing the Lewis structure, there's a link at the end of this video. This is Dr. B looking at the intermolecular forces for SO3, sulfur trioxide. We only have London dispersion forces. Thanks for watching.